videos will be about angles of elevation and depression. On your notes, you will see there are three vocab words that you're going to need to know. Line of sight. This is the horizontal from your eyes. So if you look over to the diagram on the right, this is going to be considered your line of sight. It's just the horizontal if you're looking straight ahead. Angle of elevation. This is from your line of sight. You will look up. So for example, the line of sight from the person and he's looking up will be angle 2. So angle 2 or line 2, this is going to be angle of elevation. Now, if you look at the plane, this line is also going to be considered a line of sight. Oops. Considered a line of sight as well, because it's just a horizontal line. If you look at the ship, that line is also considered a line of sight. Now, the, from the ship and, and you're looking up, you're looking up at that person. So this angle is going to be an angle of elevation as well. So line four, we are going to label as angle of elevation. Angle of depression, this is from your line of sight. You will look down. So from your line of sight from the plane, the only way that you can look down to the person is angle one. So angle one would be considered an angle of depression. If you're standing at the person, the person's line of sight is the horizontal and he's looking down at the ship, that would also be an angle of depression. So line three would be considered angle of depression. So think of elevation as if you were um, on a mountain. The elevation is really, really high. Or you, the higher you go, the elevation gets higher. Angle of depression, well, depression kind of just means you're, you're decreasing. So if you're looking down, that was going to be um, depression. Some special notes. You will see in some of these examples the angle of depression of the sun. What that means is if you start at the sun, you're going to look down at the ground. So here's your sun. This would be the line of sight. The angle of depression of the sun is going to look down. Angle of elevation of the sun, think of looking up. At the sun. So if you we're standing here on the ground. Here's your line of sight. You're looking up at the sun. So this angle is going to be called the angle of elevation of the sun. So let's do some examples. On your note sheet, we are going to complete numbers 1, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. Tomorrow you're going to be asked a question about one or more examples that you have seen in the video today. Actually, this will happen on Monday when you return to class. This first example, here is your diagram. You have a lighthouse that is 22 feet long. So we're going to label this 22 feet. And the angle of depression of the sun. So remember we just talked about this. Angle of depression of the sun is going to, this is considered your line of sight. So it's going to go down from your line of sight. So that angle is going to be considered 72 degrees. We're going to find the height of the lighthouse. Actually, I did put the 22 in the wrong spot. My, my fault. 22 feet is at representing the shadow of the lighthouse. We actually want to find the height of the lighthouse, so we're going to call that x. When we do this, we want to um, round all of our answers to the nearest hundred. If you notice... The line of sight here for the sun and the line of sight for the lighthouse are parallel. Since they're parallel, we will know that that angle is 72 degrees because they're corresponding. And then we also know that this angle down here is 72 degrees because of alternate interior angles. So now, if you look at this triangle, let's just kind of redraw this triangle without any other distractions. 
notice that we have 72 degrees. We have, let's change colors here, we have the opposite side and we have the adjacent side. Now if you remember Sokotoa, you will notice that we have the opposite and adjacent, so we have to use tan. So we're going to say tan 72 is equal to the opposite over adjacent. Now remember when we solved these problems, we created a proportion, and then we cross-multiplied. So x is going to be equal to 22 times the tan 72. When you do that on the calculator, you are going to get 67.71 feet. You can check my work if you want on a calculator or using your trick table. Let's look at example number three. You have a boat that is tied to the pier by a 25 foot rope. So here, if, from the pier to the boat, we know that that rope is going to be 25 feet. The pier is also 15 feet above the ground, or above the water. So we're going to call that 15 feet, and we have just created a right triangle. To the nearest degree, find the angle of depression of the boat. So we want to find this angle here. Now the reason is the angle of depression, because this is considered the line of sight to the pier. The angle of depression would be right there. Now we don't really know what that angle is. And that, that angle is not anywhere related to that right triangle. But we do know that the base of this triangle and then the line of sight are both parallel. And since they're parallel, we know that this 25, or this angle right here, this angle of depression, and this angle that we have marked as x are alternate interiors. So then we know that those are congruent. So let's go ahead and redraw this triangle again. We're going to have 15, 25, and we want to figure out what that angle is. So remember Sokotoa, we have the opposite side and we have the adjacent side. So again, we're going to have to use tan. So we have tan of x is equal to 15 over 25. If you want to take a minute, pause the video and solve that, that you can. Ask yourself, how do you solve for an angle? Well, in class, when we solved for an angle, we had to use the inverse tan. So we're going to say second tan of 15 over 25, and that's going to give me the value of that angle. That angle is going to come out to be around 37 degrees. Next example, a tree casts a shadow of 23 meters. So this black line down here is considered our shadow. At the end of the shadow, the angle to the top of the, the angle of elevation to the top of the tree. So if we were to finish this diagram from the ground to the top of the tree, so we're looking up angle of elevation, that angle is going to be 37 degrees. We want to figure out what is the height of that tree to the nearest hundredth. So that's the triangle that we're going to use. 23x, and we know that that angle is 37 degrees. To the 37 degrees, we have the opposite side, and we have the adjacent side. So again, we're going to use tan. Tan 37 is equal to the opposite over adjacent. When we solve something like this in the past, we've created a proportion and then cross-multiplied. X is going to come out to be around 17.33 meters. Next example. We have a ramp. So here's my ramp. It is 60 feet long. And it rises a vertical distance of 8. So we're going to, we know that that is 8 feet high. We want to find the measure of the angle of elevation. Remember, we're sitting here, we're going to be looking up because it's an angle of elevation. So we want to find that angle. From that angle, we know that the opposite side is 8 and the adjacent side is 60. So we're going to, again, use tangent. 
as you can as you've seen in the last examples that we've done a lot of the time we are going to always use tangent rarely do you ever use anything other than tangent so let's um, solve for this we have tan x equals 8 over 60 again we're finding an angle so then we have to use the inverse so tan of negative 1 of 8 over 60 is going to find our angle. Take a minute and figure that out. Pause the video and when you have that angle, replay it. You should have got somewhere around 7.66 degrees. Next example. The angle of depression from a tree house to the base of the house is 42 degrees. So if we were to have a line of sight from the tree house, angle of depression means that we're looking down and it has to go to the base of the house. So here is going to be my angle of depression. That angle is going to be 42 degrees. We know that the tree is 35 feet from the base of the house, so we know that this is 35. And we can create a right triangle. How far is the tree house from the base of the house? To the nearest hundredth. So we're going from the base of the tree house to the base of the house. So we want to find that hypotenuse. Now notice that the base of this triangle and the line of sight are again parallel. So then if we know this angle is 42 degrees, then we also know that that angle is going to be 42 degrees by alternate interior angles. So let's just go ahead and redraw this triangle because it's kind of sloppy over there. This angle is going to be 42 degrees. We have this side is 35, and we want to find the hypotenuse. Now this is a rare occasion where we do not have to use tangent because we have the adjacent side and we have the hypotenuse. So we're actually going to use cosine here. I'm going to say cosine of 42 equals adjacent over hypotenuse. Create a proportion and cross multiply. I want you to take a minute, pause the video, and solve that for x. When you solve this for x, you're going to get x times cosine 42 equals 35. You get x by itself, so you're going to take 35 divided by cosine 42. You need to be careful how you enter that into your calculator. And when you do, you are going to get around 47.1 feet. Around 47 feet. That would be the distance from the base of the treehouse to the base of the house. Example number seven. You have a tree that casts a shadow that's 50 feet long, while the angle of elevation of the sun is 48 degrees. Now, when we talked about this special note earlier in the video, angle of elevation of the sun means that if you're looking up at the sun, so here's the sun, we are going to look up at the sun, so that means this angle is going to be 48 degrees. We want to figure out how tall is that tree to the nearest tenth. Looking at 48 degrees, we have the adjacent side and we have the opposite side. Coincidence, we have to use tangent again. So we're going to say tan of 48 equals x over 50. Create your proportion and cross multiply. 50 times tan 48 is going to find your value of x. x is equal to somewhere close to around 55 and a half degrees. Whoops, we're not doing degrees though. 55 and a half feet. Okay, example number eight. I believe this is the last one that we are going to do. Sometimes they are going to give you a situation where you have to use multiple angles of elevation or multiple angles of depression, and that's what this is. You have a pilot flying at an altitude of 12,000 feet. So here is your 12,000, and it cites two airports directly in front of him. The angle of depression to one airport is 78 degrees, and the angle of depression to the second airport is 19 degrees. Now my diagram is not drawn very well. 
angle of depression means you're going to go down. You're looking down from the line of sight. So if we have the line of sight of the, of the airplane and we're going 19 degrees, this distance right here has to be 19 degrees because that distance is the smallest. Now the angle of depression to the other airport is going to be here and that angle is going to be 78 degrees. Okay, again, the line of sight and the ground are parallel. So that means that this angle down here is going to be 78 degrees, and that creates this angle here to be 19 degrees. So I'll give you a minute to get this diagram written down. Now we want to figure out what is the distance between the two airports. We want to figure out what X is. But to do that, we need to figure out what Y and Z are. So to figure out Y, we are going to use 78 degrees, Y, and 12,000. So to 78 degrees, the Y is your adjacent side, and 12,000 is your opposite side. So we have to use tan. So tan 28 equals the opposite, which is 12,000, over adjacent. Cross multiply, and you are going to take 12,000, and you are going to divide it by tan 28. When you do that, your y is going to come out to be somewhere close to 2,500. Now, let's go ahead and look at z. Now, z is using this large triangle right here. Since we're using that large triangle, we are going to call that the base, or the ground Z, and then we're going to still use that altitude of 12,000. Again, we're going to use tangent, but now we're going to use 19 degrees. So tan of 19 is equal to 12,000 divided by Z. When you solve this, you're going to have Z is equal to 12,000 divided by tan 19, and z comes out to be somewhere close to 34,850. If you want to just keep it at 34,850, you can, or you can round it, or you can round it to the nearest hundredth. Now, we have our y and we have our z. We don't want to keep our answers in Y and Z because that's not what we're wanting to find. We want to find the distance between the two airports. So we want to figure out what that distance is. So we need to find the difference of Z and Y. We're going to take Z minus Y, and that's going to figure out that value. Your distance between the airports should come out to be somewhere around 32,300 feet. And I'll just round it up to keep it a, a nice number. Now these are tricky problems. These, this last one was tricky. Um, we will go over example number nine in class. I am not sure that you will see something like this on a test, More, maybe a, like a bonus question. You will have to be familiar with how to do the other examples where I just give you a, a tree is casting a shadow and I give you the angle of elevation or you have to find the angle of depression that kind of stuff. So anything that we've talked about in this video, you will see on the activity that we do on Monday in class, but on a test or a quiz, you will see more of the previous examples, not example eight on a quiz or a test question. That's more of an advanced question that you would see in an advanced class. So that's the end of the video. Thank you for watching. The angle of elevation and depression scavenger hunt is what we will be doing in the next couple days. We'll do it on Monday when you return to class. Just make sure that you bring your notes because you will have a quiz when you get into class on one of the examples or I'll have you do an example I haven't decided yet. But you will be able to use those notes to help you with the scavenger hunt that we do in class. Now again, this section is, can, is and can be difficult. 
I know in the past this has been one of the, the sections that students struggle with a lot. So that's why I wanted you to watch the video. So then we could have some examples under your belt and then um, we can use those examples when we start working with problems in class. Bring any questions that you have for me to class on Monday and I will be happy to answer them.